As we walk around Con Expo 2023, a lot of things that we're seeing is alternative fuel machines, whether it's hydrogen power or electric. A lot of people are starting to get into the electric market, so I'm really curious on what electric skid steers are out there. It seems like every manufacturer has an electric excavator of some sort, but nobody has working electric skid steers that are available to the public except for one. This is the only one I can find at Con Expo. You would think there would be more. There, there's prototypes, there's stuff in the works, but this is truly the first electric skid steer available to the market, and it has been. There's tons of them out there. You know, there's probably 300 or so probably in the U.S. already that are operational, but more overseas. This machine is actually designed in Czech Republic, but they've also got a facility here in North Carolina where they cover all the parts and service so anything you would need it is here stateside so I think the parts and service on these machines are going to be great and you know that's the first thing we're always going to ask what's the first two questions on any electric machine how long does it run and how easy is it to get parts and service they're claiming um, eight hours on this machine with the lithium battery they're um, well let's just talk about the machine itself first so this is the Elise 900. If we were to compare that to like a Bobcat diesel machine, they're gonna say like the S76 or the S650. Um, it's a radial lift machine. But, you know, it's kind of hard to, to compare an electric machine to a, a diesel machine, but that's gonna be the closest one in this category. This has two options on the 900 right now. We can either run a lithium battery or we can run a lead acid battery. Of course, the lithium battery is gonna be more expensive, but if you do go lithium, you only get about an hour more run time. You know, it's, it's a weight issue. Um, the lead acid battery for weight is more desirable, I guess, on this machine for the counterbalance and to keep, um, you know, the center of gravity machine and the lifting capacity. If we go lithium, then they have to fill the machine with counterweight because of the lithium battery is so much lighter. Running on 12, 16 fives, and you can see that we do have a planetary gear reduction on a rubber tire machine. So that's something you don't see ever, really. I've never seen on a rubber tire machine. And the reason we're doing that is because we're running uh, an electric motor up here in the front and we're gonna go look at one that, that's opened up, but there's an electric motor in the front and running a Teflon Kevlar type belt to the rear wheel. Uh, so front's gonna be direct drive, belt drive to the rear wheel, but they never have any problems with these belts. You know, when you, when you hear belt on something of this size and that much power, it kind of makes you think, how am I gonna, you know, I'm gonna be changing belts all the time. But you know, this is the third generation of this, um, first green, the Elise 900, or I guess they're electric machines and all in, in, in general. I don't know if they have um, uh, different model numbers for their earlier generations, but they've all been belt drive and had very little to no issues with that belt. However, if you did, we would just pull this back cover off to get access to the battery. Um, fork pockets, just use a forklift, slide the battery right out, and then you have access to uh, change the belts if you need to. Maintenance wise, almost zero. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible on these electric machines that basically you've got grease. Uh, like we said, we do have final drive planetaries on the wheels. So we would have to change that oil at some point. And of course we've got hydraulic oil and a hydraulic filter, but how often are you gonna change that? Um, you know, depending on the environment and all, this is called a long life hydraulic oil. So let's just say maybe every thousand hours, maybe we would service that hydraulic system, if that. You know, price-wise, it's hard to say. I'm gonna walk over here to the one that's opened up. You know, it seems like there's several different price options. Like I said, we got the lead acid um, battery. We got the lithium option. You know, if you want air conditioning, um, if you want it remote control, right now you can operate this from your phone, but there is a remote control option that's just more sensitive. You know, if you have to run it with your phone, it, it's fine, it works, um, kind of like Bobcat Max Control, but if you want fine tuning, that's another option. You would actually have a remote control that works much better with it. So, you know, depending on options and everything, this machine is starting, the 900 is starting kind of in the 80s and on up to over 100,000, uh, depending on options. And there's also gonna be a 700. The problem with the 700 is that it's gonna be a smaller machine um, and the only option 
for that is going to be the lithium because of the weight. If they were to put a lead acid in the 700 machine, it would be too heavy. So you only got a lithium option. So price point on that is going to be right around that $100,000 mark. So although it's a smaller machine, the technology, the components, the drive system, the batteries are almost essentially the same. You know, it's just a smaller body. So it's hard to say, you know, price difference on a larger versus a smaller machine when they're using almost the exact same components. But if we do take a look kind of down inside here, you can see up front is our drive motors. So we've got, it's over 400 volt uh, AC drive motors that are connected to the front wheel. And then coming to the back, we can see how this is kind of different than like the Bobcat that uses electric actuators on its machine. This machine is using an electric motor driving a hydraulic pump. So we still have, basically it's called electric over hydraulic uh, for the rams, for the lift and tilt. And we also have the option of hydraulic power at the front so that if you still have attachments that are hydraulically operated, you can still run them off that. But they also have a line of electric attachments that we can run off the plug. So anything rotary right now, like a snowblower or a sweeper, we can still run um, electrically off this and they've got those electric options. Right now it does have a plow blade on it that is all hydraulic. Um, which is cool. And then it looks like it has a master switch that maybe go inside. Yeah, I'm not sure how many functions. It looks like we've got the joysticks inside with plenty of buttons so we could do all the functions from inside the cab. But again, I'm not exactly sure how all that works. Another option is air conditioning. We can see right here, it's all electric air conditioning unit that they would put in there. It's basically just plug and play, you know, at the factory, they can actually install that from you or at the, um, yeah, I, I guess it'd be the factory in North Carolina if you wanted to add AC to it. It comes standard with heat, of course, but the AC would be an option. We can take a little closer look at the interior here. And I, I got up in there and I'm not a small guy by any means, you know, 6'1", 220 pounds. So kind of give you an idea that it, it's, it's comfortable. It's not real tight, but there is room in there to fit it, it just it wasn't uncomfortable but i feel like i would benefit from a little more room if that makes sense but very simple we can look up here they've actually got a cell phone on there so that is your control panel your cell phone will have an app on it and the app is essentially your control panel that's how you'll run the machine and then we could also have this is going to be the cameras i guess on the rear um and it, it we pretty sure that's what it is yep so that is the reverse camera but they also have a hard display if we did not run it off your phone so pretty much your ignition switch you turn it on you select all the options and everything via an app on your phone which is pretty cool never seen that before so very interesting that four days here at con expo this is the only rubber tire skid steer in production available to the public that I can find or that I can know of. So if you know of anything different, let me know. They're also working on a track model. You know, it's, it's like the track models are a little harder to do because of their, their real power hungry. The power consumption from a track model trying to spin those big tracks is a difficult engineering or difficult from an engineering standpoint, I guess. And it's just funny how Bobcat, uh, they just released here at Con Expo the S7X, which is their electric rubber tire machine but they've had the 7X in production for a while. They've made a lot of changes and it looks like that's going out for sale here uh, very soon to, uh, I think Sunbelt Reynolds is gonna be the first recipients of that machine and uh, eventually it'll be available to the public. But as of right now, it is not. Their rubber tire machine probably won't even be available till 2024. So if you want a rubber tire machine here in the next year or so, this is your only option. So check them out, first green, at least 900 and hopefully here within the next couple months, they will have their 700 model available.